Hi, have a look at how computers can represent images as bitmaps. We're going to look at another way to represent images, which is as a vector graphic. So, first of all, a vector graphic type of image is where we are storing it with lists of objects. So we're not storing it as loads of pixels, we're storing it as lists of objects. So there are what we call primitives, really our fundamental units, which in vectors are different shapes, things like circles, rectangles, polygons, text, etc, etc. All our sort of fundamental shapes might consist of our object primitives in our uh, image format. These are our fundamental units, in other words. And we can specify different properties for each object, each of these fundamental objects. So these are also stored in the list for properties of the image. So properties include things like their color, how big they are, where they are meant to be on our page, their coordinates, etc. Right, a rectangle on its own is not very useful. We want to know how big it is, what color it is, where it's going to be on our page, and so on. That's quite important. So all of these are stored together in the image. Right, it will be in binary, of course, but here we've got some HTML code which is allowing us to represent an SVG vector image. SVG is a really common file format for vectors. It stands for scalable vector graphics. That word scalable is really important in a minute. But for here, we've got here, you can see, uh, we've got rect rectors for rectangle are one of our fundamental primitives, e ellipse and text, and other primitives in this SVG format. I'm specifying after my primitive, different properties, their height, width, what color it is, uh, the um, outline and so on. Here, different properties for different primitives, different ones but I'm specifying this in what we call an drawing list. So I, I skipped showing you what this looks like. By the way, if I run this code in a browser, it looks like this. I've got a yellow rectangle and this purple ellipse. So going back to my important bit here about a drawing list. So this whole thing is called a drawing list. This group of objects and also their properties is my drawing list and a browser or an image viewer can take this drawing list and actually replicate, replicate our uh, vector image. So I mentioned that word scalable in scalable vector graphics for SVG format is pertinent because we've looked, we've looked at bitmaps, we've learned about bitmaps and now we've learned about vectors. There's not really much more to know about vectors apart from to evaluate them versus bitmaps. So as you would have come across in your own life, bitmap images can't be perfectly scaled to an arbitrary size. Arbitrary means just any value. I could pick any size and bitmap image does not like to be scaled to certain sizes. You know, if we wanted to make a bitmap image really big to make it larger, you need to make every pixel bigger. Because a pixel is our fundamental unit in a bitmap, we can't just magically make a pixel, we can't make it bigger without stretching out. And so you end up with a grainy image where you can start to see pixels, right? If you go really close to a monitor, you'll be able to see pixels, unless you've got a really, really expensive one. Same with low quality images, you can see pixels, they're kind of grainy, right? This is a an image of a laptop sticker, which I can appreciate the sentiment, I'm sure you can too. If I blow this up, make it really big, you start to see how grainy it is, you start to see our individual pixels, and the quality looks not very good. And this is where vector images are advantageous, because we are saving vectors using this list of objects, this drawing list, where we have the objects and properties. The properties are defining where the objects are located relative to each other using coordinates, and we're also giving the size of our object. And so using this information, we are able to basically resize vectors normally with a, a pretty easy way. So for example here, let's put two lines, again HTML here, where I've got two circle objects with different properties. This would look like this if I um, put it in a browser, and I'll show you this in a second. You can see I've got different properties. I've got the coordinates, CX and CY, and also R is our radius. And you can see I've changed it in my second line here. So I get this bigger circle, shifted more to the right. You can see I've changed the X coordinate here. So because they are stored relative to each other, I can increase the size however I want to. So probably best if I show you this as opposed to me just sort of explaining this. I can, I've got this in my browser. It's being rendered by taking that drawing list and just uh, replicating it. I can zoom in and out and I'm not ever, ever gonna see any graininess, any pixels because there are no pixels, it's a vector image, there are no pixels here at all. And so I can make it tiny or massive and there's no loss of quality. And you'll know from experience you can't do this with a bitmap because we start to see pixels because it's just being blown up too big. Another good thing about a vector is the file size for vector graphics is the same regardless of how big our objects are. So if I save a huge, huge circle, then the actual file size is the same as saving a tiny circle because 
we're just saving that we are saving a circle and how big it is. We're not actually representing that circle. Whereas in bitmap, if I'm saving a massive circle, I've got to save loads and loads of pixels. Whereas if it's a tiny circle, I save fewer pixels. And so the file size is the same in a vector, regardless of the actual size of our objects. Whereas in a bitmap, the actual size of each of our elements is really important to the file size. And because of this, and also just generally, a vector graphic image tends to be smaller than a bitmap equivalent because we're not saving values for every single pixel like we are with a bitmap. We haven't got pixels, we're just saving what the object is and some properties of it. So at this point, people tend to go, wow, this is amazing. Why do we even bother with bitmaps? Stick with vectors, our life is much better. Unfortunately, there is kind of a major limitation of a vector graphic, which is vectors, because of how we represent them with just maths and objects, we cannot represent continuous areas of color very well. And the consequence being they often do not very, they often don't look very real. They often look very cartoonish and just not realistic. So here on the left, we've got a bitmap, a JPEG image. It looks realistic. It's not the greatest quality, but it looks realistic. If I vectorized it, if I converted it to a vector, I get something like this, which I made a little bit bigger. To hopefully you'll be able to see it even on the phone. You can see, hopefully, the colors here are not very realistic. It looks like someone's done it in paint, maybe a decent artist, but we've got just blocks of color as opposed to a nice gradient, a nice change in color here. Whereas here we've got different blocks of different shades of green and different shades of beige and so on. It does not look realistic. It looks cartoonish. And so you can imagine why this is. It's trying to save all of these different blocks as objects. It cannot go into tiny objects and make it almost a pixel. And so we end up with blocks of the same color. It doesn't look very realistic. So it's great for cartoons, for logos, etc., but not great. Um, to go back, by the way, is called rasterizing it, uh, rasterize it. Um, a bitmap is also called a raster graphic or raster graphic. If you may, you may see that term. So really, if you're representing a real image, we need a bitmap. If you're doing a cartoon or a logo, a vector is good because we have advantages like the ones we've talked about.